You know, there's a very specific type of creative agony. It's not a dramatic, tear your hair out kind of thing. It's a quiet, slow burning frustration. It's the feeling you get when the vision in your mind is so vivid, so perfectly formed, but the tools you have just can't translate it into reality. It's the feeling of being a director with an actor who just won't take direction. I lived in that feeling for about 72 hours straight last week. I was working on a branding project, a really exciting one for a new app. The core of the brand was this friendly, approachable mascot, a little character I'd sketched out named Cody the Coder. The sketches were good, the client was happy. Now I thought, let's bring him to life. Let's use AI to generate a whole world around him. Different poses, different situations, marketing materials, the works. The dream, right? An infinite content engine. So I fired up one of the big popular AI image models. I uploaded my sketch, wrote a detailed prompt describing his personality, his style, everything. The first image, honestly, it was pretty magical. I thought, this is it, this is the future. But then the real nightmare began. I needed Cody to be waving, simple enough. But what came back wasn't just a little off, it was chaos. Suddenly, Cody had six fingers on one hand. In another version, his entire spacesuit turned into shiny sci-fi armor and his face looked 20 years older. One image gave him hyper-realistic human eyes straight out of a horror movie. Then came a version where Cody wasn't even the same ethnicity anymore. And yes, one of them randomly had a Nike logo on his chest. It felt like I wasn't working with a creative partner, but hosting a bizarre costume party where my character showed up in disguise every time. So I dug in. I became a prompt engineer. I wrote paragraphs of text trying to nail down the style. A 2D vector illustration with clean lines, a pastel color palette, cell shaded, no gradients, friendly, expression. I was practically writing code in English. And what I got back was a gallery of imposters. Some were vaguely close, most were complete strangers. My screen wasn't a canvas anymore, it was a digital police lineup of failed suspects. And here's the worst part, it's not like I didn't try everything. I locked the seed, I wrote hyper-detailed prompts, I even tested predefined styles, nothing worked. Each small prompt tweak triggered a massive visual shift. It's like if every time a developer compiles code, 30% of the functions randomly rewrite themselves. That's how broken this process is without real control systems. And this isn't just frustrating, it's a showstopper for professional work. How do you keep a brand identity when every image is a lottery ticket? How do you illustrate a children's book when your main character changes age, ethnicity, and outfit between pages? How do you ship a game when your characters never look the same twice? Simple. You can't. I was about to give up. I thought maybe the technology just wasn't there yet. I went down a rabbit hole of forums and videos, and I saw I wasn't alone. Everyone was struggling with the same issue. Consistency. But then, buried in a discussion between some professional designers, I saw a name I hadn't heard before, Bria AI. They weren't talking about prompts, they were talking about training, about data sets, about legal safety. I was intrigued. I had found a door and I'm gonna walk you through it today because what I found on the other side felt less like just another tool and more like a new philosophy for creative work. Before we even touch a single button, you have to understand what makes Bria so different. It's built on what they call accountable AI. Now I know, that sounds like a marketing term, but it's real, and it's built on three pillars that address the biggest fears and headaches for any professional creator today. Pillar one is the biggest, the legal foundation. This is not the exciting part of creativity, but it is the most critical if you ever wanna make a living from it. We're in the wild west of AI right now. There are huge, ongoing lawsuits against some of the biggest AI companies for scraping the internet and training their models on copyrighted images without permission. As a freelancer or a small business, using a tool built on that questionable data is like building a house on a legal floodplain. It might be fine for a while, but one day you could get a letter from a lawyer that could ruin your business. Bria completely sidesteps this. Their models are trained from scratch, exclusively on 100% licensed data from partners like Getty Images, Alamy, and other world-class stock providers. Getty's entire business is built on managing and protecting intellectual property, so their partnership is a massive stamp of approval. But Bria goes a step further. They offer full legal indemnity. That means they are so confident in the clean origin of their data that they contractually take on the legal risk for you. They are putting their money where their mouth is. For a creator, that's not just a feature, it's peace of mind. It's the freedom to create and sell your work with confidence. 
Pillar 2 is the ethical engine, and this is the part that speaks to my soul as a creator. We've all heard the backlash from artists who feel exploited by AI. Bria's answer is a patented attribution system. It's a brilliant concept, like a Spotify for visual art. The system can programmatically trace which pieces of source data influenced a new creation, and based on that influence, it creates a model to compensate the original artists. Think about that. It transforms the relationship from one of exploitation to one of participation. You're not just using a tool, you're taking part in a circular economy that respects and rewards the human artists who provide the foundational creativity. It allows you to build your success on a foundation you can be proud of. And Pillar 3, it's built for professionals. This is not a simple, closed-off app. It's a platform. For developers, Bria provides access to the model's source code and weights. Now, if you're not a developer, that might sound like jargon. But let me translate. It's the difference between a microwave meal and a professional chef's kitchen. A normal AI tool gives you a simple API, a microwave. You put a prompt in, you get an image out, you can't change the recipe. With source code access, you get the whole kitchen. You can fine tune the fundamental behavior of the model. You can integrate it deeply into your own products. You can build custom tools for your company that are perfectly optimized for your workflow. It's all built to scale on enterprise grade cloud platforms like AWS and Microsoft Azure. It's designed for serious work. So that's the theory, that's the promise. But let's get our hands dirty. Let's see if the practice lives up to it. We're gonna resurrect our failed pixel perfect branding project and we're gonna build out an entire professional grade brand world, step by step. Here we are in the Bria studio. Our mission is to build a brand brain using the tailored generation feature. This will be our own private AI model that only knows and speaks our unique visual language. Now, the most important step in this entire process is curating the data set. Garbage in, garbage out. It's true for all of AI. You have to be a good teacher for your AI apprentice. I've spent time creating a high quality data set of 20 images of our mascot, Cody. Let me show you what makes it good and what to avoid. You need absolute consistency in style. Don't mix a 2D illustration with a 3D render. Pick a lane and stay in it. But within that style, you need variety in content. You can see I have Cody happy, thoughtful, celebrating. He's shown from the front, the side, a three-quarter view. I have close-ups on his face and full body shots. This variety is what teaches the AI the character's full form and personality, not just a single flat image. And finally, subject dominance. In every shot, Cody is the hero. He takes up at least 70% of the frame. This is critical. If your subject is a tiny speck in the corner, the AI will get confused and learn more about the background than your actual character. Okay, our lesson plan is ready. In the Train Projects tab, I'll create a new project. I'll name it Pixel Perfect Brand, set the medium to illustration, and the type to character variants. Now I just upload my curated dataset. We're using Bria's light training, which is phenomenal for this art style. Then create model and the magic button, start model training. The AI is now studying my images, learning the nuances of my style. In a short time, I received a notification. Our brand brain is ready for its first day on the job. Now the fun begins. Let's head to the playground. This is where we communicate with our newly trained model, the real test. I'll prompt, looking thoughtful with a hand on his chin, a glowing light bulb above his head. Let's hit generate. And look at that, it's perfect. It's not just a character thinking, it's our character, Cody, in the exact style we trained. The line art is the same, the color palette is harmonious, the shading style is identical, this is the consistency we've been searching for. But this is where it gets really powerful for any marketer. Think about creating seasonal content. It can take days or weeks. Let's see what our brand brain can do. Wearing a Santa hat and happily holding a Christmas gift, festive background with soft, out-of-focus holiday lights. In seconds, we have a high-quality, on-brand Christmas post ready to go. You could do this for Halloween, for summer, for any event in minutes. Finally, Let's think about the day-to-day -day workhorse, social media. We need a simple, positive image for Instagram. Giving a big thumbs up against a clean, on-brand pastel blue background. Bam, a perfect asset. And from here, we could ask for a version for a Twitter header, a sticker for a chat app, 
or an illustration for an email newsletter. We could generate 50 variations of this in an afternoon. This is the power of a brand brain. It's a tireless, on-brand, infinitely scalable creative partner. But the professional workflow doesn't end at generation. It's about refinement, editing, and responding to feedback. And this is where Bria's toolbox really shines. Let's imagine our client comes back with a change request for the Christmas image we made. We love it, but can we add some wrapped gifts on the floor next to him to make the scene fuller? In a traditional workflow, that's a significant edit. In Bria, we use the eraser and generative fill tool. I'll roughly mask an area on the floor and simply prompt a pile of beautifully wrapped Christmas presents on the floor. A few seconds later, the entire scene is enhanced. The new objects are perfectly integrated with the existing style and lighting. It's magic. And what about asset creation? Remember that Instagram post with the thumbs up? What if I want to reuse that character, but without the blue background, for a presentation slide? I bring the image into the background removal tool. One click, just one. And it cleanly separates Cody from the background with pixel-perfect precision, nailing all the complex edges. The amount of time and tedious manual labor this one feature saves is staggering. Finally, let's talk about quality. That Christmas image is perfect for social media, but what if marketing now wants to use it for a high-resolution printed holiday card? We need more resolution. We take the final image to the Increase Resolution tool. We'll upscale it by 4x. Bria's AI doesn't just stretch the image, it intelligently redraws it at a higher resolution, adding detail and preserving sharpness. You get a massive print quality file that's clean, crisp, and ready for anything, without any of the blurriness or artifacts of traditional upscaling. So let's just take a breath and zoom out. Let's reflect on the journey we just took. We started in a place of pure chaos and frustration where the technology was an obstacle. And we've ended in a place of total control, confidence, and creative freedom. We've built an entire consistent professional brand world from scratch. We did it knowing that every single thing we created is legally sound and commercially safe, backed by a full indemnity. We did it with a clear conscience, knowing we're part of an ethical ecosystem that values and supports human artists. Tools like Bria represent a monumental shift in how we create. They don't replace the artist. They elevate the artist to the role of a director. Your vision, your taste, your curation, your storytelling are more important than ever. The AI becomes the ultimate apprentice, infinitely skilled, perfectly obedient, and tirelessly dedicated to bringing your unique vision to life. It democratizes creation, giving solo creators and small teams the power to produce visual content at a scale and quality that was once the exclusive domain of massive studios with huge budgets. This is how we move forward. I want to extend a truly massive and heartfelt thank you to Bria AI for sponsoring this deep dive and for so clearly dedicating their efforts to building a platform that solves the real, tangible, and often stressful challenges that we creators face every single day. They've built the tool I was searching for during that long, frustrating week. If anything you've seen today resonated with you, if you are tired of fighting your tools and are ready to finally have a creative partner that understands you, then I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, recommend you explore Bria. I've put a link right at the very top of the description below. Go see for yourself. They have plans that scale for everyone, from individual hobbyists and startups, all the way to global enterprises. Thank you so much for investing your time and watching this. I hope it was as exciting for you as it was for me. Let me know in the comments below what's the first thing you would build with your own brand brain. I would genuinely love to hear about it. If you found this valuable, a like and subscribe is always deeply appreciated. Now go create something amazing. I'll see you in the next one.